Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition bonus Neil Marketing Podcast. Today I have special guest Becky McRae, and she's going to talk about the advantages small town retailers have over big city retailers. Welcome to the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast, a bi weekly discussion of best practices, latest trends, and modern techniques for professional business communication, including advertising, marketing, digital channels, social media, public relations, and alternative options. Today, I have special guest Becky McRae, and she's going to talk about the advantages small town retailers have over big city retailers. That's right. The advantage is with the small town, right, Becky? It absolutely is. It absolutely is. And most people don't realize it. That's right. So for those of you who live under a rock and do not know who Becky is, you're going to catch up real fast. So Becky is a prolific writer, public speaker, and advocate, probably an evangelist for small town life. Uh, living in a small town in Oklahoma, uh, one of my favorite small towns actually in the, in, the, in the western part of the state. Just come off a big massive snowstorm up there uh, where she was out every day feeding the cattle and taking care of business the way small town people do. But she is also an amazing business expert. And so we're gonna have a conversation today about focusing on the advantage you have not thinking of disadvantages or advantages your competitors have, but focusing on what you can do, what you should be doing, and how you make an create advantage for yourself, no matter what your situation is. Right, Becky? Absolutely. So let's just let's dive in. These are natural advantages that you have as a small retailer over the giant retailers. And the first one is, and I know it seems obvious, but you actually get to know your customers and what they need and what they want. And that means that you think about that when you are tailoring what you carry in your store. And it's also something that you think about as you interact with every customer. What do they actually need? And that you are so much better at that than any algorithm. Right. And so to build on that advantage, the best thing that you can do is to ask yourself, how can I actually work more of my customer's perspective into every aspect of my business? Because knowing everything you know about your customers makes you that much smarter than any computer algorithm that Amazon can deploy. So all the smart marketers right now are talking about customization, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. small town retailers have been customizing for a very long time, right? Because paying attention to who their audience is, right? Exactly, exactly. And that is something that if you've been in business for more than a year, you have accumulated an amazing stock of knowledge that they're trying so hard in the in the large technology world to figure out how do we replicate that kind of knowledge right. well that's something that you've developed and it feels instinctual to you and so you can you can walk through a market or look through a supplier list and go i know what my customers will want off of this and then there's also as speaking as someone who's been a retailer for over a decade i realize that there's also the, the alternative of that, which is you never know, right? Like you never know what the customers will go for. And so you have a pretty good instinctual feel and an acceptance of the fact that you have customers that are human. And that is a big advantage. The key, now, right? Paying attention, what works, what doesn't work. And a little yeah. bit of 80-20 rule, right? 80% mm -hmm. what you expect to work, 20% experimentation. That's all, that's all that traditional marketing mix. Uh, but you, you're really focusing it on specifically the advantage of a small town retailer or a smaller retailer, Absolutely. even it could be a big city, but you could have a small retail presence and still have these same philosophies, right? Right. Any indie retailer that no matter where you're located, these same advantages apply to you. Um, the second one is fewer layers and you can be so much more flexible because the last time that you called in for customer service from some big company, you remember what layers are like, right? Like layer after, can I talk to the supervisor? Can somebody help me with this? Oh, that's against our policy. We can't do that for you. Think about how you actually treat your customers in your business. I got you trouble your... in my office because I was yelling at my phone because and I'm trying to remember now exactly. It was a big, I think it was a technology issue and I couldn't get past the automated system to get a human being to understand that my service was being affected by, by weather and some other things and I needed a human being and I couldn't get past a human being. I finally got a dial tone and then it went dead again. So frustrating. I was yelling like an idiot 
at my at my cell phone that everyone else in the building was like, what is going on down here? And, and no one blames you. And that is absolutely the big corporate experience. So think about how you in your indie store, how you treat your customers and you don't give them layer upon layer upon layer. You know, at most a customer is one layer away from you. <laughs> and that's, that's the person at the counter right now can get a hold of you immediately and can resolve an issue. And you have the ability to be so much more flexible. You can look somebody in the eye and go, well, I know I can just give them a handful of screws and they'll, they'll catch me up next time. Or I can take care of this this way, or I can adjust like this for Kyle, or I can do this for Myrna. And so you can make that flexibility. Think about how that is your advantage. The way you turn that advantage to even greater advantage is you, you ask yourself, now, how can I be even more flexible in what I offer my customers? Yes, because absolutely. It's it's such an advantage because a big company cannot do that. Yes, sports car versus battleship, right? Like they, <laughs> <laughs> the big box retailers are not going to pivot quickly, but a, but a sports car or a, you know a small a small tractor <laughs> can right? can easily maneuver uh, and make those adjustments almost on the fly if necessary. If you're paying attention to your audience and understanding, you do have to make those adjustments, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that kind of brings us to that third natural advantage, which is that you share your knowledge. You know, a few years ago, my staff and I from our liquor store put together a wine tasting that was held at our local arts festival. Now, the wine sellers from Oklahoma could sell their own wine. If they if they're a winemaker, they could sell their own wine. We set up from the liquor store, we couldn't sell anything. Now we could give tastings, but we could not sell anything on site. But I knew that was fine because customers would come to me. And so we were happy to share our knowledge right there in that format, even though it didn't mean immediate sales. Can you imagine trying to do that in a major metro area where they're gonna turn around and instead of coming to you, they're gonna to go to any one of your competitors. So sharing your knowledge is something that is so much easier in a smaller market, and especially as an indie retailer, something that you can do that is impossible impossible to replicate from a bigger perspective. And the more specialty uh, an item or the shopping yes. is, the more your expertise as a buyer. I think liquor store is a great example. A lot of people know uh, common brands, but if they're looking for something special, if they're looking for a gift, if they're looking for uh, to buy something for someone who maybe drinks different than them, the yes. person at the liquor store is where you're really going to get their knowledge that you're yes. not going to get in a big box retailer because everyone there is literally just working a job as opposed to being a part of the liquor store process, right? Absolutely. And it applies in any, in, in any situation, no matter what you're retailing, as long as it's reasonably unique. And you probably carry, if you're an indie retailer, you carry more local items, mm -hmm. you carry more handcrafted things, you carry stuff that's smaller, one-off, more unique than the same generic stuff made in the Orient and put into a giant shipping <laughs> container and shipped over and is carried by how many retailers? Well, because you, what you carry is interesting and unique, then your knowledge of it, the thing that brought you to carry it in this first place is something that you can share that turns back into your advantage. So mm -hmm. think about the, the key to this is there's so many formats that you can share that knowledge so that we talked about that in person, right. but think about every single channel online, you can be sharing your knowledge. And that sharing of knowledge and specialization customizing your, your product mix and and having that interaction with, with your customers, et cetera, again, is the exact antithesis of big retail, right? Mm -hmm. It's the things that they won't do, that they can't do, they're not built to do at all. So mm -hmm. even though some people might say they have an advantage on uh, obviously size, but inventory levels, purchasing power, you know, uh, the, the scale of economy, all of those things, but they will never catch up to a small retailer when it comes to these items right here. So as a small retailer, you got to dive head first into this, right? Like this has to become the holy grail of, of how you run your business. Absolutely. It's, it's choosing and carrying those things, but it's also sharing that knowledge. So here's the bonus tip that goes with that. And that is write down every single question yes. that a customer asks you for the next three weeks and then answer that 
online. Answer it. If you have your own website and blog, answer it there. If you are on any social channel, answer it there. Answer it in video, answer it in text, answer it in audio, make flashcards. I don't <laughs> care. Um, one of the most common questions that we used to get is, okay, so how many glasses of wine will I get out of a bottle? So we turned that into a blog post. Sure. And I cannot tell you how many thousand people came to our website to get the answer to that. And so while most of them weren't in my local market, I promise you more people found that who were in my local market than would have found me if I had never answered that question. Absolutely. And, and then I, we took I, a bunch of Super key there, I don't want to miss this because you made a great yeah. point. But I want to emphasize this. You said across every channel. Every channel. Don't just put it on Instagram. Don't just put it on your every way that you can communicate with your audience. Take that same piece of content and use it specific to each channel, but use right. it over and over and over. And not just do one time, right? Like every month right. you can answer that question again. We used to, every single year, we had the best wines for Thanksgiving dinner. It was a new post. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying you have to be present on every single channel. Oh, everybody's talking about Clubhouse. I'm not saying you need to go rush into those new things. I'm saying all the channels that you use, mm -hmm. you should repeat that same content so that the customers that follow you in different places can find that information. And also you have visual learners who need to watch you yeah. say it. And then you have some people who are like, oh, well, I want to hear your audio version. And then there are other people that are like, okay, I want to read it. I need to read the words. Okay. So you make the different versions. It's not that hard. It's the same information. You can record it one time and split the pieces and you don't even have to do it. There are people who will do these things for you. <laughs> That's right. There are, there are some very cost-effective ways of outsourcing Absolutely. those those items as well, right? And, I, don't, and I'm don't sure assume, you've put a whole, I'm sure you've done an entire episode on yeah. how to do that. <laughs> don't assume that everyone saw your Facebook post. Number one, everyone's on Facebook. Number two, Facebook won't show it to everyone because of their algorithm. They're trying to make you pay for that access. Same thing with Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. Typically people who are really focused on, say, Instagram, aren't necessarily as focused on all the other channels. And so just getting it, finding ways to get it to the people that, how they how they take in information, right? Absolutely. It's a super important aspect. It's one thing to understand it, it's another thing you have to execute. And I believe that's one of the, one of the places people fall down and yeah. what they understand and, and how they execute is not, not trying to go across omni-channel as much as they can without taking too much of their time away from actually running their business. Absolutely. Well, there are cost effective ways you can get magic elves to do these things for you. And so you record it one time video and audio, reading the text to the camera on your yep. phone. And then you send that file to someone else, they break it up and they can do the posting for you. So you don't have to specialize in that. The interesting thing I'm seeing in small towns is people are starting to specialize in that kind of service for local businesses. So look for your local social yes. media professional and support them and they will support your business. So some of your best deals you can make on someone who's trying to build their business up. Absolutely. So someone who's new at something, but a service like digital marketing, that is a new, you know, we have been doing digital marketing for a hundred years. We've only been doing it for, you know, so many years. So you don't have to go get someone who has 50 years experience in digital marketing. That isn't such a thing, but someone who is young, but hungry and aggressive and willing to work with you, you might, you might create some real synergy. And, and for the small town people, if there's not one in your small town, look at your nearby small towns, because mm -hmm. there's probably somebody that's, you know, maybe in a town just a little larger than yours, who's already doing this. And they're going to be so much more affordable than hiring some big city slick expert like Kyle, right? Like, See, I like how, so, but I like how you said that, because that was in the back of my mind was also when you consider hiring or working with third party advisors of, of any sort they do need to understand where you're coming from and yes. who your audience is. They can't force, you know, I, I tell people all the time, like what works in Dallas or Chicago or LA doesn't necessarily work in Oklahoma City. Obviously what Absolutely. works in Oklahoma City doesn't necessarily work in Alva or, right. uh, uh, you know, Little Rock, Arkansas. So, uh, so there's a little bit of having expertise, but also understanding, it goes back to what you were saying earlier about understanding your audience, your market, your, mm -hmm. your actual competition, just the scenario of where you live. Yes, absolutely. And they've got to have that local accent and that local knowledge. So yes. important. It's more it's more important to have a local voice than yes. to be the slickest, you know, most impressive right. presence, right? Right. I believe in authenticity greatly. I know you do too. And so it's, it's one of the places our, our brains come together for sure. Okay. 
Okay, so the next local advantage is that you're innovative. See, limits breed innovation. If you have absolutely too much money, it will make you stupid. You will do stupid things stupid, when you have too fat, much money. lazy. <laughs> It happens. It happens. So when you have very little money, then you come up with creative solutions to things. Yes. And that allows you to do things that it's completely impossible to do at the scale of the billion dollar behemoth, but is so doable at your scale. And so you have to, you have to ask yourself, how could I come up with an even more creative solution to this? And what creative solutions have I already come up with that I'm not taking full advantage of? So that kind of creativity, you can't buy it. You cannot buy that right. same creativity that your limits have bred for you. You are used to dealing with a limited group of customer base. You're used to dealing with the fact that there's only so many support services in your community. You're used to dealing with the fact that there's not all the money in the world. And that has made you lean and innovative and yes. do not let go of that. For sure. And in fact, you have to kind of lean into the idea of it's not bigger and better it's different right differentiation and that different is not just different don't be weird to be weird but being different the way you do things in your town because we're talking about a small town and small towns are definitely have a character to them and if you understand it we were saying you know brand voice earlier then the connection is so much easier than a five million dollar super bowl ad right Right, right. And, you know, at, a, at one time we used to think of advertising for small businesses was only the one single source of the local newspaper. And now we have so many more tools available to us that we've had to innovate in the way that we handle that. Yeah. So that's just the question of marketing, not to mention the cool hacks you've learned of dealing with suppliers who don't like dealing with one small account. You've learned where to find people that will work with your store. You've learned to find local providers. You've learned how to find the things that represent your people and their entire lifestyle. Every year we see more and more innovation and changes and subtle adjustments that you have made in your business. Those add up to a long-term competitive advantage. For sure, absolutely. Okay, the last of your, of your secret advantages as a, an indie retailer is that you benefit your local community. And this is one that people don't think about. We just sort of do it naturally. We say yes to a lot of donations. We have causes we support. We have individual projects that we put our time and money and effort into. We have things that we support our employees and staff when they are working on those projects in the community. And we never, ever tell anybody. <laughs> do you know yes. how big of a deal Amazon makes of their Amazon Smile program? Right. They give one half of 1%. <laughs> oh my gosh, you do so much better than this in your business. Yes. Start telling people. And they have this huge advertising for their SMILE program. And you're not telling anybody about the intensive support that you've provided to the community theater. Yes. Or the amount of work that you have put in on the arts program in your community. Or how you have supported the Senior Citizen Center and their critical role in your community every single year. You haven't told people you need to do so much. Remember earlier we said tell in every single format yes. that you use. You need to tell your community benefit stories. Now, I know already, especially small town people, a bunch of you right now are going, oh, no, I couldn't do that. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about myself. It's not it's not about me, but it, it is. It is. This is needs but, to survive. But it's about that project. Talk about that project within your business context. Here's why we are so supportive of our Senior Citizen Center for the socialization, fighting loneliness, helping people stay healthier longer. This matters so much to us. Tell that story. It, there's a reason you do it. Yes. Tell that story, tell it in every channel. And one thing, this is kind of a trick that I don't see near enough retailers using, feature those stories in your business. Put an entire section, make a display, put up a sign, show pictures, tell the story of how you are supporting this cause and invite your customers to come along with you. You'll be maximizing your own support by multiplying it with your customer's support. Yes. When you dedicate the space and time to share that story, why you care about it and to invite people along with you. 
And you don't have to feel self-conscious about being self-promotional because there's no need for an actual ask. You don't have to tell people, we support this, so buy stuff from us. Simply tell the story, the motivation, the story, the benefit to all, they'll get it. The public will understand, I like what you're doing. I do want to support you. Or I want to, I might make a direct donation, but I also might buy through you because you're become involved. And even if they don't, at the very least, they walk away with a positive aspect, a positive image of you, which in the future, whether it's their purchases, recommending to others, et cetera, et cetera, right? So there's no downside to this as long as you don't make it too promotional. And you won't, right? No. I I haven't met the small town people who are over promotional. (laughs) They're, They're just not out there. So as long as you say, here's the thing we support, here's the project we support, here's why it matters to our community at large, and here's how you can get involved as well. So if it's that senior center, then you say, here is where you can drop off your donations, or here is where you can mail donations, or here's where you can donate online. That's where your ask is. You don't ask to buy from us, you ask people to participate. So that's how you get your small town folks over that hump of, oh, I I don't want to talk about us, and that's not why we do it. That's that, of course, that's not why you do it. So talk about why you do it. The other stuff, the other benefits will come naturally. You don't have to force that. And and I've seen so few ads or marketing messages of any kind that explain why you are supporting that particular project. What does Remember at the end of the day, the why is the most important thing about anything, right? Simon Mm -hmm. Sinek, why? know your why, your why of why you started your business, you run your business, why you keep your business located in a small town as as opposed to trying to go to different markets where there may be more opportunities. All of those things are important to anyone who would do business with you. So continue to focus on your why, of why your business exists, why you do things in the community, why you partner, why you choose the, the products or services that you offer, that why is so much more important than, you know, the, the actual, if I pay $3, I get two of these. Right, right. Um, we tend to make our messages too much about the the nuts and bolts and the, the most current change thing, right? Oh, this new product, or you should buy this. When really our marketing messages as independent retailers are most effective when we're talking about the concept at large, yeah. the reason this exists, what we do with the community. And keep in mind, the one thing that survey after survey, study after study shows is the thing that we're missing the most right now and that we are so desperate for are the feelings of connectedness and community. And so if you make every single message that you put out over the next year, talk about the importance of this to the community whether that is the importance of your business, the importance of the person you just hired, the importance of the project that you are supporting and what they do for the community, then you are reaching that deepest, most unsatisfied need that your customers are desperate for. Very good. And you make a human connection. There's nothing but positive that can come out of that. And the arc of everything we're saying, big box, big city, your competition, online, et cetera, they just absolutely won't and can't do these things. So this is your advantage as a small town retailer. Absolutely. I I watch with interest every year as the local big box at the edge of town puts out their one ad a year where they are trumpeting the huge donation that they have just made to the local cause with the awkward photo of the local manager who has been swapped out from some other town and doesn't know the community and is here now and they're new. Um, and they're handing over the awkward check to Big people check. that they don't know. Yeah, yeah, And, and that's their only donation for there. the year, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's their only donation for the year. If you spend all you're talking about your support for the community, then you have an enormous advantage over that because then when they make that little token donation at the end of the year, yeah, that it, it is so it's obvious a, it's to a other people. It's a blip on the radar, but you're invested. If, if, you, if you are a part of the local community, you're invested. And at the end of the day, people really do business with the people in a business. Right. Uh, you know, your brand presence informs them of what you do. If, if, if it's if it's clothing, if it's food, if it's if it's liquor, etc. But I go to this store because Be- Becky works there, or mm-hmm. I go to this place because they they take care of me, or they do these things, or they support my kids' school. You know, all of those things are motivations to why people do business with your business. 
And I think it comes down to a, this, this concept of branding. The brand is your overall reputation with people. So they probably can't even tell you the one reason they shop with you. And it's if they are only price sensitive for, for customers who only care about the price, we know that they're not your customer. And that's fine. Your customer are the people who look at the overall offering and they have formed this impression of your business over time. It has built up layer by layer, individual action, individual message, social media notice, yep. the people that you hire, the projects that you support, the ways they see you interact in the community, and the way that you treat other people, it all adds up little tiny bit. It's like it's like varnishing something, you know, thin little layers, and they build up over time to this, to this finished product that you can't say is the result of any one action any one factor, but it's that that is your overall reputation with people. And that is what brings them back to you, even if they can't explain it to someone else. Which means simply doing business the right way, treating people the right way. You know, if you want to call it the golden rule, treat others as you would like to be treated as the consumer and doing things authentically. All of these kind of buzzwords that we've woven in on the marketing ideas here, but it really does come back to this basic theme, which small town people are better at naturally than, right. and I'm not no knock on, I'm, you know, I live in the big city. I'm a big town guy too. Now I'm from a small town, but it's no knock on how life is in the big city. It's, you know, fast versus slow and all these great things, but it's the advantage and the focus that small town retailers should be bringing to the conversation because you don't focus on disadvantages. You only focus on what, what works for you and anything can be made an advantage if it's authentic. Right, so I wanna throw in, I think we're kind of coming towards the end here. I wanna throw in one more thing, which is how you as an independent retailer can trick Alexa as well as Google Home or Siri to place an order with you instead of with those national and internet international firms. Now, this is, this is a sneaky idea that I came up with several years ago when we first started seeing people put Alexa in their homes. And we apologize for using the name of these devices. You will- <laughs> okay, They're not all trying to order something right now. It is. And so you're going to have to, you're going to, have to put a warning at the beginning of this podcast. It includes <laughs> the name of a specific home device. Uh, but the trick is that you you don't want your customers to ask her to order the item. Hey, order that lemon soap, right? If you say that, it's going to order from Amazon. So what you want them to do is you want them to ask their assistant to send you a message. And that can be in whatever channel you take messages, because all of the major voice activated assistants, they will send an email, they will send a text message, and they're also capable of making a phone call. And so as long as you're reachable by one of those three methods, all you have to do is prompt your customers to enter your contact information so that they can say, hey, assistant. <laughs> device. <laughs> device. Hey, device, please <laughs> send an email to the Copper Penny to order that lemon soap I love. And it'll send the email. And that comes to you. There but if go. they say order lemon soap, it's just going to put it on the on the ordering list that goes automatically to Amazon, which you don't get a piece of. So the thing you have to do, the only thing you have to do as a retailer, you don't have to have any technical skills other than the emails you already receive, the text messages you already take, or the phone calls that you already answer. All you have to do is prompt your customers to say, teach your device our contact info so that they can call us. So teach your um, Siri to call, and then here's our phone number, and we'll talk to you. Or send us an email by your device at this address, and we can take your order. And so, that's great evergreen content. You could share that tip over and day. over and over and over again all the time, you know, a couple times a month, every single month, because, uh, Obviously, not everyone will catch it the first time. And then when they hear it again and again and again, it continue to reinforce 
how yes. to do that versus just the the let it letting the device take take control of that scenario right absolutely and so it's something that goes in your contact information now so you've got like your business name your physical address because you have to list it every single time because people need to know where they find your store and then you have that phone number and then under that you say ask your device to call us right right so it's part of your standard address information now and it goes in your bio on all your social channels, right? So it's something that you now take as part of your standard information that you're sharing. Every single time you share this, you say, did you know you can order through your device to reach us? Speaking of marketing, so this whole conversation, you know, and you, we've known each other a while and we've done business together. So um, I follow all of your channels on social media. We've had plenty of conversations about these topics, but what triggered this device, this conversation today was one specific tweet that you put out that we re responded to. So this was a great example of putting out marketing content. You were sharing, you were sharing all this information. We appreciated what you were sharing we started the conversation online it now has ended up in this podcast and, and video conversation so i'm going to read this real quick and i want to talk about your your three social channels and and all the things that come along with them as well because because you and i do disagree sometimes on the importance of social but becky <laughs> specifically tweeted this because this is a great message is how we started the idea behind this conversation today you have special advantages as a small town retailer you can be even more competitive when you tap these special advantages and combine them with some of the best tricks online retailers have been using against you. That was your tweet. You yes. just showed us one of the one of the, the tricks you can do to utilize those devices to work for you that have been working against you for, for some while. And you gave us five tips uh, uh, that I think come from uh, this, that came from save your town account, right? So as you think, say it's this entire system of your content. These all started as individual articles on my blog at small biz survival, okay. which is written for small town businesses. So if you Google trick Alexa, <laughs> then you're going <laughs> to find that first post. If you Google use big retails tricks against them, you're going to find that article. So all of that came together. I've reused the same information repeatedly, keeping it up to date. It was part of what I put into the uh, Future of Retail article that the Main Street America put into their annual report. And then it was also part of some content that we created at SaveYour.Town, which is designed for small town people to help revitalize their communities based on what they care about the most, as opposed to like, here's the checklist, do things our way. This right. is this is about, it's your town. You are going to do the things that make it even better and more prosperous into the future. So in those practical steps that you can put to, into action right away are the ways that retailers can be competitive and beat the online competition. And that was our featured new video for the month of February this year. So we do a new, a new video every month, but you can see that what we're doing is drawing on decades of experience that I and my co-founder Deb Brown have, not only in what we do online, but also our personal backgrounds. I'm a, a former retailer myself. I used to run an antique store that I marketed online. I ran the liquor store that I marketed online. I've been teaching other businesses how to market online since 1997. So it all comes from these real world experiences, from the content that we've shared in a wide variety of locations. And then we put together the best of it to make very practical information you can put into action right away which is exactly what I'm asking you to do as an independent retailer, which is to think about all of the information that you have, have collected in your brain and find more ways to share it and share it over and over, update it, bring it together, turn it into practical information for your customers and keep getting that message out there so that they can take action on it. So Becky has brought us amazing com uh, information today, tips, tricks, concepts, everything for small retailers competing against the big competition. Uh, local businesses are not helpful, not helpless against online competition. Another post from savior.town. So make sure that you check out, of course, she is Becky McRae and you can Google her or find her on all platforms as Becky McRae, but also save your.town. 
and a fantastic organization where they work specifically with small towns on all types of things to make their towns fantastic. And her, I know we say it wrong, I want to say small business, it's small biz survival. Uh, her blog also on the social media channels as well, where Becky is constantly sharing this information. Your first tip, your first tip was share your information. Will you do that on a regular basis? You walk the walk and, and talk the talk. So that's why when Becky speaks, you guys should pay attention. When she tweets interesting things, I reach out to her and say, let's talk about it on the podcast because there's nothing better than a great guest expert like Becky. One last thing, I'm gonna give you one last kudo. It was one of my favorite things when Becky ran her liquor store, she had the most creative business cards ever. So you all know the little bottles of liquor that you get on an airplane or in hotel rooms. And of course uh, the liquor stores have them as well. And Becky used these as her business card going to conferences where she was speaking or attending. And obviously no one ever walked away with, I don't need one of those business cards. Even if they weren't interested in drinking the bottle of liquor, it was a creative approach. So you took an actual advantage you had, something that you were doing uh, and made it something that you your competitors just wouldn't do. And that goes back to that tip we were talking about earlier about being creative because you don't have the giant budget. You have to just work with what you have, right? Absolutely. And I tell you what, people used to have like actual fights over who could get one of my business cards. <laughs> I remember like, let's get, Becky's here. Let's go get her. Let's go get one. <laughs> I carried them in a bag, right? And people would like knock pe other people over to, in the line to get one of my business cards. But it was a way of standing out in that social media crowd at the conferences I was attending, but it's also something that's just so compelling and interesting. They have been shared virally everywhere. So if you are a small retailer, or if you are connected to a small town in any way, they're a retailer, a resident, a part of small business government, et cetera, in the links to the show description, all of Becky's links will be there. So check all of the things she's she's doing out. If these are topics that relate to you, you definitely want to be paying attention to the content she's putting out on a regular basis. I appreciate you so much for jumping on with me today, Becky. I'm glad that the ice and snow is gone and that uh, you're back to what we would call normal life and not having to uh, go break ice to get the cattle their feed on a <laughs> couple of times a day, probably, as you were doing the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we're, we're tired of hauling water <laughs> and hay. So it's good that we are on into spring and that we have come to the moment when we can kind of relax a little bit of having having kept the cattle healthy through a very stressful time. So now we just got to watch out for tornado season. Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate you very much uh, today, Becky, being on the New Marketing Podcast, sharing your expertise. And again, everyone, make sure you hit the links in the show description and check out all the things that Becky has to offer. Thanks a lot, Becky. Thank you so much, Kyle. This has been the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Tell a friend, leave a review, and engage with us on social media. Thanks for listening. 